The life of an actor must be tough. The endless auditions, the promises by directors that just dissipate into the ether, and worse still is when you've acted your socks off only to be told the role has been given to someone else. Hollywood has routinely had parts written for specific actors or just cast celebs because of their name draw alone, and if you dig hard enough you'll find a fair few odd auditions and strange things down the back of the casting couch. And yes, I do know what a casting couch is. It's the furniture used in Harry Potter, so don't get all smart ass with me in the comments, alright? With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com here with a list of 10 completely insane ways film actors scored their famous parts. Number 10. Thomas Turgus. This is England. When director Shane Meadows held open auditions for his vision of 1980s skinhead subculture, he was on the lookout for a young lad from Grimsby with a hard edge to them. Thomas Turgus was a 13-year-old novice and was even banned from his school play thanks to bad behaviour. This was one hell of an opportunity for him to act, but instead of jumping at the chance, Turgus demanded £5 just for his presence at the audition. It was this cheeky, down-to-earth attitude that impressed Meadows so much, who cast him in the lead of his movie despite his complete lack of experience in acting. Number 9. Dev Patel, Slumdog Millionaire Danny Boyle's Slumdog Millionaire is an against-all-odds story, resulting in a very fitting underdog Oscar win and also the casting of lead Dev Patel. Boyle had gone out to India in search of a leading pair for the film. Frida Pinto impressed early on, but the search for a male lead proved to be more difficult. Boyle didn't want somebody too muscular or handsome in the part. This needed to be played by an everyman whose luck changes for the better. Fortunately, the answer came from Boyle's daughter, a fan of the Channel 4 drama Skins. She recommended Patel, who played a sexually frustrated teen named Anwar, and a short while later, Boyle cast him as his protagonist. Number 8. Madonna, Evita She's received mixed reviews for her acting in the past, but that didn't stop Madonna thinking that she was perfect for Evita. The Queen of Pop wrote a letter to Alan Parker begging him for the role, stating that she would sing, dance and act her heart out. Madonna also personally met with the Argentinian president when the crew were denied permission to film on the famous balcony in the Plaza de Mayo in Buenos Aires. And the immersion in the role paid off. The film was nominated for five Oscars and Madonna earned a Golden Globe for her role as well as a Guinness World Record. Her 85 costume changed were the most in any film, 20 more than Elizabeth Taylor and Cleopatra. Number 7. Mila Kunis, Black Swan Mila Kunis is no stranger to landing roles in odd ways. The Family Guy star was only cast in that 70s show because she lied about her age, telling casting directors that she was 18 when in fact she was closer to 14. For Black Swan though, Kunis came recommended by friend Natalie Portman, who told director Darren Aronofsky that she was perfect for the part. Rather than meeting in person though and giving the actress a formal audition, Aronofsky instead conducted a couple of Skype conversations with Kunis. And apparently the first few sessions with the choreographer conducted with both Kunis and Portman were via webcam too. And Kunis was informed that she'd won the role via text. Isn't modern technology wonderful? Number 6. Anna Paquin, The Piano Star of X-Men and True Blood, Anna Paquin became the second youngest ever Oscar winner when she picked up Best Supporting Actress in 1994 at the age of 11. It was her first acting job and it launched her career, but it almost didn't happen. Casting directors held open auditions for a young girl aged between 9 and 13 to play the part of Flora, Ada's daughter in the film The Piano. Holly Hunter, who was playing Ada, was only 5 foot 2 inches tall, so the crew were looking for a young girl who'd be a believable height. They saw 5,000 auditionees, including Paquin's sister, but Anna turned up just by chance. She wasn't even there to audition, but somehow managed to win the part. Paquin later claimed that she actually never wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be Prime Minister of New Zealand, she claimed. Or failing that, a lawyer. Number 5. Rupert Grint, Harry Potter After author J.K. Rowling insisted that the major three parts went to English actors, a nationwide hunt began. However, Rupert Grint only heard about the casting via news round. At 11 years old, he was already a fan of the books and decided that he'd make a good Ron Weasley, thanks in part to his ginger hair and punchable face. Rather than asking for an audition though or writing a letter like Madonna, Grint filmed himself rapping about why he should get the part. Nevertheless, the casting directors were impressed and amazingly gave him an audition. Number 4. Eddie Redmayne, Les Mis Good old Redders was in North Carolina when one night he found himself doing karaoke with kick-ass star Chloe Grace Moretz round Blake Lively's house. As you do. The pair encouraged him to audition for a part, so he filmed himself singing Empty Chairs at Empty Tables on his iPhone. After choosing one of the three or four different versions he'd recorded, he sent his best one to his agent. After it was forwarded on to producer Eric Fellner, meetings were set up between casting directors and Redmayne. And the rest they say was the Russell Crowe vehicle that we now know and find very grating. Number 3. Shia LaBeouf, Nymphomaniac For the film Nymphomaniac, LaBeouf decided to throw his keys into the bowl despite admitting to Playboy in 2009 that he's not extremely well endowed. 
LaBeouf sent intimate pictures of himself to producers of the film when they asked, before filming an example of him and his girlfriend just to prove his credentials. The movie boasts a real sex scene which LaBeouf had made sure to defend, claiming that sex is beautiful when done right and I wouldn't just do it for no reason. Number 2. Megan Fox – Transformers While Charles LaBeouf had to go to great lengths to score a part in Nymphomaniac, Michael Bay didn't take nearly as much convincing that Megan Fox was right for Transformers, seeing as he didn't even audition her. He did, however, reportedly ask her to wash his Ferrari. Right? Because this was a formal audition, though, he made sure to film it. Right? Bay later admitted to Fox that he just didn't know where that footage ended up. Jesus Christ, this guy, I just- I don't even know if I'm impressed or worried he's got a shed full of skinned faces. Megan Fox was replaced by Victoria's Secret model Rosie Huntington Whitley for the third instalment of the series. One can only imagine what she was asked to do in her audition. And number one, George Lazenby, James Bond. Lazenby claimed that he first realised he wanted to be Bond in 1962, upon taking a girl to the cinema to see the first movie of the series. The pair of them were blown away by Sean Connery's suave performance, and so Lazenby went all out to imitate the man. He bought a Rolex watch, got the same haircut, and even bought a Savile Row suit that Connery didn't want. But his chance came in 1969, and by that I mean that he turned up for an audition despite not being invited, bolted past a receptionist, barged into where the directors and producers were, and then said, I hear you're looking for James Bond. After bluffing about acting experience, he was invited back a day later. In his proper audition, he punched a stunt director in the face, reportedly breaking his nose. The producer was astounded by the display of aggression that Lazenby had shown, not least because this stunt director was a professional wrestler. The punch was completely accidental, but it won the Aussie the role. Besides, he'd already gatecrashed a studio, earned an audition, convinced the whole crew that he was an actor, and knocked out a wrestler. If this man wasn't James Bond, who was? And that's our list. Got any more actors with unusual auditions? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to come make a personal donation to my film library, then you can do so on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share, and subscribe for more. As always, I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com, and I'll speak to you soon.